Thank you for listening to Comics for Fun and Profit. This is Kyle and Drew with your sneak peek at next week, episode number 478 for comics originally releasing October the 10th. 2018, but before Drew and myself get into what's coming out in your local comic shops this coming Wednesday, Drew, I got some previews in the mail, so we got another bundle to toss out and a whole bunch of stuff in the world of comics. Tell me where we're going. Yeah, hot off the press, um, I gave you a little a little peek at half of our bundle last week, um, so now that we, got the, we have the full thing ready to go, the Comics for Fun and Profit bundle through Cowabunga Comics is... Uh, four titles for eight ninety nine. That is forty seven percent off cover price. Uh, they are the following: Livewire number one from Valiant, Nice number one from American Gothic Press, Wizard Beach number one from Boom Studios, and Love Town number one from Devil's Do. Let me give you a little bit more about those. Uh, Livewire is a Valiant book written by Vita Elia and art by Raoul Allen. Uh, It's an all-new, ongoing series for the first time. Livewire takes center stage. So there you go. Um, Vita Alaya is originally from Supergirl, um, is the writer on that. And uh, it's a $3.99 book. It comes out December 19th. Now, Nice Number One is from American Gothic Press, and it's written by Dagan Walker and Joseph Ettinger with art by Mark Rene. It's a nice day for murder. American Gothic Press' first series collaboration with Echo Lake Entertainment begins here. Kevin and Jose are 20-something hipsters cruising through life in a fancy car, drinking at bars, and chatting about nothing, except when their mysterious employer sends them on errands that may involve killing people. Wah, wah, wah. Then we have Wizard Beach, number one. Written by Sean Simon, with art by Connor Connor Nolan. When Hexley Daggered Ragbottom sets off to find his Uncle Salazar. What was that name? Hexley Daggered Ragbottom. Oh, for crying out loud. He expects to find the most powerful wizard of the modern age. Instead, he finds Uncle Sally. Only wants to kick back, relax, and stay clear of any kind of wizard politics. Dum, da dum, dum. Then we've got Love Town, number one, from Devil's Due, written by Matt Yawn, Juan, um, and John Juan, with art by Matt Juan and John Juan. Double chores there. Uh, when famed artist Fillmore Hauser is killed at one of his infamous soirees, Detective Saxon must find the murderer. Despite the house being full of guests, nobody saw a thing. Is this Love Town's Code of Silence at play, or is there a more sinister explanation? I bet you it is. It's a supernatural hey. noir thriller. Now, this is our four ninety nine book. But, again, because it's in our bundle, um, exclusive C4 Fat Bundle, by the way, <laughs> $8.99, 47 off through Cowabunga. Um, and you know what? You get this bundle, you get on the list, you get the whole order form, you can get all the sweet variants, the rare stuff, and then you can also get on the FOC, which we'll talk about a little later, all through Cowabunga Comics. Um, You can go to cowabungacomics.com and find all that information, Cowabunga with a K, or just send Eric at Cowabunga Comics an email, and that's Eric with a C at Cowabunga Comics. Dot com in the Cowabunga Comics is with a K. Comics is with a C. You know what I mean. We've done this a lot. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of good stuff in this previews coming around. There is. There's, of... there's tons of there's tons of stuff. It was really tough to, to narrow it down to to mm-hmm. a few for a bundle. I could have done a mega bundle, and I was like, nah, that yeah. that's too many. I a lot of like... things I'm thinking about jumping on. I'm 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 looking in uh, Tomasi starting uh, Detective. Yeah. Yeah, I think this. I mean, and it's six issues out, so this is the perfect time to jump on and get that first run. Oh yeah, into a thousand. There's some great Marvel and DC stuff too that's that's launching. And I was like, well, those are pretty. It's pretty easy to get those at decent prices when they launch. They all launch at fifty percent off, so mm-hmm. um, no real. It's not real tough to find those. So yeah, I was kind of looking through um, some of the more obscure stuff, seeing what we could find. 
And if anybody's shopping for Christmas presents for me, there's this wicked absolute swamp thing by Alan Moore hardcover volume for a hundred bucks that looks so good. <laughs> Man, that looks good. What a shameless, shameless plug that is. <laughs> I have zero expectations. I just know that I'm not buying it for myself, but I do like it. <laughs> now the uh, before we get into our feedback, we do want to send a shout out and thank you to Jason in Hawaii who sent uh, Kyle and I a lovely gift um, for our collective birthdays. Um, and in addition to that, he also gave us something for you guys. He gave us a sign from, uh, from Amazing Comic Con. Uh, he gave us the Amazing Spider-Man Renew Your Vows number 19, signed by Scott Koblish and uh, his wife, uh, Jane Jameson. So we will be giving that away to one of you lucky listeners uh, who bothers to go over to iTunes and leave us a, a review. So between now and the end of the year, um, leave us a review on iTunes, and then uh, we'll pick a name out of a hat, get a hold of you, and mail this puppy to you. It's a beaut. Um, and you, you'll have your very own signed, signed Spidey comic by Scott Koblish and his wife. So thanks, Jason. That's pretty cool. And thank you for the gifts. We enjoyed all our Hawaiian treats. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, let's see. We've got some more feedback. We've got Aaron Churchill who writes, I just read Volume 1 of Fence. Uh, I know Drew likes has been me- has mentioned liking this in the past. Um, what do you think draws you into this comic or makes a good comic in general? Because with Fence, there wasn't a lot of action per se, but the pacing was great. The story read well, though quickly. The characters were well defined and done so through the telling of the story, not so much telling you what their character was like, if that makes any sense. Um, well, for Fence, yeah, I, I kind of like that it's a breezy read, uh, it's pretty light. Um, like I don't know much about fencing, but I learned a lot about fencing by reading it. Um, I'm kind of there's an underdog to root for. There's a bad guy to root against, who's kind of a jerk. Um, and you know that's it's kind of simple, but I like I like that sometimes. Um, Kyle, for you, what makes a good comic in general? Uh, you know, I I mean, interesting subject matter good art it, it's got to have something that hooks me from the beginning can't be a slow burn um but mostly well written very in, intriguing something something new something fresh um but things catch me off guard like we talked about how you talked about the things with fence like i never thought i'd really have fallen for that first archie mark wade archie run but I, just it was so well written and i really just fell for the characters on that one so there's all kinds of different things that I've fallen for, but mostly it's just got to be well written. It's got to keep me keep me engrossed, and for me, it can't be too wordy. <laughs> I yeah. don't like super wordy books. Yeah. Um, you said that he went on to say that uh, for a Tom King book, his late he's writing on the latest Crisis book has great pacing. Uh, he does a great job with the voices of all the characters. He seems to be able to really get the characters to talk in a manner that matches their personality. There's subtlety to how the characters he writes talk and interact, while at the same time showing so much of who they are. Um, see the latest issue of even Batman two weeks ago. Uh, the, f- the back and forth between Batman and Nightwing was amazing. Um, it was. Also, what, what, keeps, what keeps you going... So, we, so this is leading into his question. What keeps you going long term when it's not based on just a favorite character? Uh, let's see. Keeping us going long term as readers... I think I'd echo what Kyle said and just, you know, like, like the surprises. I like to be caught off guard. Um, and sometimes I go in with low expectations and I'm like, wow, that was great. Or something I expect to be good is, is it pays off because it's good creators and things. Um, characters. I don't, I guess the only characters that I always read are Batman and Spider-Man because they're always out. And Moon Knight. Moon Knight's not always being published, though. That's true. Okay, I'm at. Yeah. When, when he when Moon Knight's around, you'll find Drew. When yeah, when Moon Knight's around, I'm I'm gonna chase that one down. But but yeah, I I always read Batman, 
the main title, and I always read Spider-Man, the main title. Um, but I, you know, I don't always read Detective. I don't always read, you know, all the other Bat books, and I don't always read all the Spider books. Um, but for some reason, I always read those those two characters. But that's what he said. He's not he said not based on a favorite character. Uh, so I, it's more creative. I I chase writers. So yeah. r- writers intrigue me. I'll I'll read anything Zid- Zdarsky's on now. You know, I'm really was impressed with him lately. Anything Donny Cates is doing. Um, uh, you know, I've, I've been really enjoying Bendis's non superhero stuff a lot. So all his new launches, I'll I'll follow those. Um, you know, people like that. I like, I like writers. Of course, I mean, BKV. <laughs> yeah, BKV, absolutely. And like Walking Dead, I'm just, regardless of what it does, I'm in. I'm in through the end, regardless of what yep. it does or who it does. And that's because of what it did for getting me back into comics. I kind of feel like I owe it. So, I, you know, I'm in for two or three copies till till Kirkman decides to let me off the hook on that one. Yes. But the thing is with me, you know, I'm a Nightwing guy. And I get frustrated with Light, Nightwing. And I wanted to just quit because, you know, it's not been interesting and it's not been good lately. And I, I, I've said, I'm out. I'm done. Screw this. And then I open this previews and there's a beautiful cover with him and the gargoyle in the background. And just that, my attachment to him and that character, just seeing that cover is enough to pull me back in. When for no other book would it be, would would that be a thing? Yeah. Uh, have there been any big surprises for you recently where you didn't expect much from a comic, but the story just pulled you in? I'll tell you a story about a, a buddy of mine who cannot stop talking about Cosmic Ghost Rider. Ah, that's cool. He just loves the the humor of it. He loves that character. And he's sad that it's only a six issue series. Yeah, I, I can I can see that. Um, I would say like something like Super Sons. Um, yep. look, looks really all ages. Wouldn't think to be something I would like. Um, I really really like that a lot. I thought that was great. Um, Things in the past, Vision. Um, yeah, wouldn't think that would have been good. Wouldn't have thought that was as good as it was. Um, uh, Magneto really fell for that. Did not even. Th- want to fall for that but just did and uh I'm trying to think what else chip kinda... chip zadarsky doing marvel two and one and peter parker spectacular spider-man didn't think those didn't think because you know, he was an artist and a funny guy yeah didn't think he'd have any writing chops you know great uh i think donny cates was a huge surprise to me when on thanos um absolutely i didn't know he was going to be so good and so prolific so um that was a big surprise and black bull solomon uh, solid solid dead ahmed solomon ahmed i can't remember how to pronounce his name um but anyway uh that was a huge surprise i mean i loved black bull a lot and um that did didn't had zero expectations for that going in Mm -hmm. so yeah it happens all the time happens with a lot of indie stuff because I sample a lot of number one so you know I go into those things cold and uh, I'm like oh wow that that's great I loved Red, Red Shanghai a book about an image book about um, you know a girl getting Shanghai thrown on a on a, a boat for three years and coming back for revenge um, that that's pretty cool um, and I, that came out of nowhere you know, any you know, most image comes out of nowhere for me. I just pick sure. them up, take check them out, and they're fantastic. Yep. Um, uh, second, he said he has his. This is like a twelve part email, by the way. Second, <laughs> second topic. What are your thoughts on comics grading? There are a couple of keys I have that I thought I was about getting graded. One comic I looked up. No names or numbers shall be mentioned. Hmm, I wonder what that is. Uh-huh. <laughs> Went for a couple hundred ungraded to over 2,000 with a good grade. Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Um, do you have any graded comics? Please share your thoughts around this topic. Side note, wasn't Howabunga Comics talking about doing a podcast on grading for a while? I'm anxiously awaiting that. Shots fired, Eric. Get that done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. I do have some. Uh, my very first graded comic was a present from my brother. Hey, it's the Humans Zero issue um, that 
I couldn't find anywhere, and he only he not only found it for me, but also it was a graded nine eight. So uh, that's one of my cherished pr pr possessions it's up on top of my comic display wall, which I'm looking at right now. Um, I have a fade out number one uh, nine eight. And I have a what's the other one? A Sandman, the Sandman, Neil Gaiman. Uh, that's that's a nine six. So I only have three. I only have three graded comics. It looks like. Let me grab mine. I got my pile of graded right here. <coughs> Great radio, by the way. And all of my graded books I have purchased as a graded book. I've not sent anything in. I'm too big of a wuss because I don't like disappointment. Seems complex. Yeah, yeah. I have my beautiful Saga 18 in a 9.8. It's the uh, Lion Cat cover, one of my favorite covers, in a jet black. Not completely easy to get a 9.8. I have uh, the Walking Dead Governor special, number one, as a 9.8. I have... Uh, Walking Dead number one, uh, the Philly Comic Con edition as a 9.8, uh, Walking Dead 82, and Walking Dead 96. Just a few things I've picked up in, in bulk buys and stuff uh, just to have. And then I have somewhere around here, I was in a shop, and there's an, uh, like a, a weird, goofy issue of Wolverine with uh, Silver Samurai on it, and it's like a 3.6. And just the just the fact that somebody thought to send it in and got an obnoxious cover, and you can look at it and see that like somebody put a piece of paper over it and traced it, so like you can see just like somebody there's pen there's pen indent around most of the stuff. I, I don't know if they just didn't notice that when they sent it in, but just the story of somebody thought and paid good money to send this comic in and got a garbage grade, and I picked it up for like eleven dollars. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So my thoughts on comic grading are, I get it. I mean, I understand why it's nice to have third-party party verification on the grade of a book um, and why that's important to people. Um, I think there's some inconsistencies, especially when you venture out of CBCS and CGC and you get into the PGXs of the world. Um, it, it, I, I don't know that I trust some of the grading, um, I've heard some things about CBCS where it's they, they have some inconsistencies and some of the CGC stuff that is turned around like instantly, like before the stuff stuff's out on the shelf released and then it's a, there's a CGC version and I'm, I'm I think it's kind of weird they didn't really spend a lot of time with that I wouldn't think I'm mm -hmm. not sure how they got that done that quickly uh, so I have some concerns about the actual process and whether it's legit you know i i grew up um i'm old school so i grew up with the overstreet guide to grading and um it wasn't you know it was fine and very fine and near mints and stuff like that so um that's kind of like this that's how i grade comics and uh I'm never going to have a lot of graded comics. Mm -hmm. um, it just it, it doesn't really appeal to me. Um, you know, if I ever want to take a look at it and flip through it, I can't unless I break the thing. So, um, yeah, they're they're not really for me, but I I do get that I do get it. I understand their appeal. Yeah, and it's just weird because I used to think they you you know you essentially added the value of the grading to the overall value of the book. But the more I'm seeing things and the way some people think about grading is you just, that's just strictly proof of what the grade is. It doesn't really add value. It's just the fact that you know what you're buying. Just that peace of mind more than anything. Um, well, it definitely is going to put a floor on your value. Yeah. I mean, unless you're taking a loss because... It, I don't think you can get a get a, a, a an, even a modern graded for less than fifteen bucks or twenty mm -hmm. bucks, can you? No. So, you know, the floor has got to be at the grade level plus, you know, a little bit of a, a percentage of the 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 guide value of that. So, but I've seen them below the cost of the of the slab. 
Yeah, yeah, I've absolutely seen that as well. Uh, but you know, that's that, I don't think that's realistic. Anything else on grading? Um, I got books that I'd love to get graded. I just never really pulled the trigger on it. I, I, yeah, the, I don't have many left. <laughs> but there, yeah. there are a few that I wouldn't mind having. But the one he's questioning, I suggest he goes and he gets graded. Yeah, that's that's a great key. Keep it, it'll keep forever. I mean, the the thing I I, I might do now that I'm flip flopping on my own argument is signature series stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, because I have I have tons of comics signed to me by the creator. You know, I handed it to them. They handed it back. We had a conversation. I love those things. I'm never going to get rid of them. So um, maybe to preserve them um, so it's harder for my family to discard them when I die. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. Um, but, yeah, that that is kind of intriguing to me. So um, maybe if I get, like, a, get it done in bulk or something that might be fun but I don't really you know I don't really care I guess as much about those because they, they look nice in a top loader mm-hmm. let's see uh, Chris Brooks well, uh, wait a minute one more thing from he said, does say thanks for your time and your thoughts still listening and enjoying your show thanks for keeping it going because last week woo, it was close <laughs> it was close <laughs> You, when you, you listen to my solo show, it didn't sound like it was keeping going, did it? <laughs> uh, anyway, Chris Brooks comes in and says, Thank you, Comics for Fun and Profit, for mentioning William the Last by Brian Shearer on your most recent podcast. William the Last is a free webcomic that was kickstarted successfully and is now being published. I am a fan of Brian Shearer's artwork and storytelling. Definitely checking out William the Last. Well, I'm, gl- I'm glad. I, I looked interesting to me too. Uh, that might have been two weeks ago, right, Kyle? I think so. Does that sound familiar to you? Yep. Uh, let's see. Wolf uh, chimes in. Champions Twenty Five is an underrated key book in the realm of Infinity War, but with from a weird world angle. It's got with first appearances of Shadow Spider, Mystic Marvel, Lady Ironheart, Snow Gore, Stalax. The Great Ashu and Sam Alexander as the master of real, Weird World. Man, we're running out of superhero names. Yeah. Well, I did read Champions. Uh, I think you're. Uh, it was great, Wolf. I agree with you there. It was a great. I'm curious if they, if this is going to be like they're going to hang out with these characters for the arc, and then we'll never see them again. Um, or these, they they were really cool though. They were really cool designs, and. Um, we didn't get to see what Viv turned into down there. So Viv Vision is also in the real world. We didn't get to see her yet. So I'm excited about uh, the next issue. Um, long term, I don't know if they're if these are going to be first appearances of characters that live on. Um, but they sure were great designs. Um, I agree with you there. I'm guessing you don't read Champions. I missed that one. I'll have to uh, check it out. It was it was Champions twenty five. I was mulling that over as a pick, um, and um, didn't didn't do it. There you go. All right, Kyle. I hear there's a new Aquaman trailer. Tell me all about there it. There is. I, I watched the new Aquaman trailer today. Much better. It didn't seem as reliant on CG. The first one scared me a little bit just because it looked obnoxiously CG heavy. This one did not, um, so I am looking more forward to Aquaman. That's cool. Yeah. You don't think it'll take a dark turn <laughs> at some point? I, you know, it's one of those things where I, I don't get to go out. I didn't get to leave the family and see many movies in a given year, and I'm, I'm uh, Aquaman's going to be one of my movies. That's cool. I shun the family and go see. So you're going to skip Venom? Go to Aquaman. Skip Venom. Okay. Definitely doing Aquaman, and uh, there was something else I was wanting to do. Definitely doing Shazam. No, oh, yeah. Okay. Well, on the heels of the DC uh, Walmart hundred page giants, uh, the four titles that are out, we are going to get a Swamp Thing Halloween special, written hmm. by Brian Azzarello and. 
illustrated by Greg Capullo. Wow. Yeah. And so that should be a fun 100-page uh, giant. And it comes out this weekend. So, I'm going to go buy the living crap out of them. <laughs> yeah. So Sunday. It's supposed to be out Sunday. Um, <coughs> so if we know Walmart, it's been out for a week and a half. <laughs> and they're all bent. And they're all bent. Um, but uh, that'd be something worth checking out. I'm assuming it's exclusive. That's the biggest creative team on any of these 100 pages, in my mind, right? Um, well, I don't know. Bendis was on Batman, and uh, Tom King was on Spy- on Superman. So Yeah, but you, you, that, you had a good writer or a good artist, and this is like two knockouts. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, so, uh, based on the success I've had with the other 100-page giants, yeah, I'm going to pick some of these up and yeah. flip a Rooney. And hope that the the excitement is there. I mean, yeah, this I mean this one seems like a a, a much easier thing to get behind with it being a Halloween special, a good team, good timing on it, and not bogged down by three other titles with it. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm I'm thinking it might just be a one shot just for the month of uh, that Halloween's in, but that's still cool. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully, they send its own packaging. You know, its own little box stand to be in because yeah, yeah. Uh, those are getting beat up, and there's not a lot of room left in them. Yeah. Did you have you Did you buy any of the five dollar three packs that have been beside all the hundred page books at Walmart's? No, I did not. <laughs> Mine had quite a few of those sitting there. Yeah, the, they were kind not of taken over the display case. Yeah, I was gonna say those seem to be the featured item. Uh, we got some uh, foil covers launching this week. Uh, we got the Batman out. I think is that the only one? Um, no, I don't think it was, but I couldn't tell you what the other one is. So Batman uh, is the one I focused on. What what we heard was uh, we heard some horror stories of a lot of wavy foil covers. We've heard of a guy going through a what a stack of a hundred. Yeah, looking for something that could be close to a nine eight. Couldn't mm-hmm. find it. Um, we've heard um, Eric said he, that he didn't. He thought they looked pretty good. There was maybe a crease in all of them or something, though. Yeah, he talked about Batman. There's Curse of Brimstone and Green Arrow. Um, so yeah, there was more than one that came out. That was the the foils. But yeah, the Batman was the one that I heard the most horror stories. Yeah, of. yeah. He said yeah. I think he said the other ones looked great. Yep, they were fine. Um, so yeah, but. That was my concern too. Is that we're going to come um, beat up and a like a fingernail would leave a permanent scratch in them. But mm-hmm. um, we'll we'll have to see. Uh, let's see. Uh, I was very sorry to to read in the latest Peter Parker: The Spectacular Spider Man. Uh, that was Chip Zdarsky's last issue. So he finished his time on on the series. He wrote a really nice essay in the back about. A lifelong dream for him to write it and um, how much fun he had and everything. Um, he is currently still writing Marvel 2 and 1. So hopefully that stays. And maybe he's just get moving on to something else or he's going to go back to a creator owned or do a little more art. I don't know. He didn't mention what he was doing. But there, uh, Peter Parker, Spectacular Spider Man's not ending. Uh, it's moving to some other guy that I didn't I don't recognize didn't recognize the name Ryan something um, but uh, sometimes spider spider-man is taken away from you but he also is being given to you because we are getting the friendly neighborhood spider-man written by Tom Taylor uh, this January so I'm kind of excited about that Tom Taylor oh, yeah. doing a spider-man book might be fun yes I could I can get behind that Absolutely. Uh, in time uh, to coincide with the the new Captain Marvel movie, we've got a new l- relaunch of Captain Marvel comic. This time it's written by Kelly Thompson. Uh, any interest in giving this this character a shot, this comic a shot again? Who is it again? Hmm. What What is it? Captain Marvel? No. None. Nope. All right. I'll probably read the first issue for sure <laughs> uh, we do have a new uh, Bendis imprint he's already got his Jinx World I think he's got four titles in Jinx World imprint which is 
been really cool. Um, and now he has a new imprint uh, for uh, it's called Wonder Comics, and this is a younger skewing line of comics. And it's going to uh, have a Young Justice book in it, a Wonder Twins book. Hmm. Um, we've, we're going to, what's the other one? A new character called Teen Lantern. And Dial H for Hero is coming back. <laughs> you remember that book? Oh my goodness, that was awful. That was so... That was, yeah, that was the worst of the lenticulars or whatever. That was a really bad bad comic um young justice is written by bendis with patrick gleason doing the art and it'll be made up of bart allen's impulse connor kent's superboy uh tim drake robin leading the team kind of cool mm-hmm. uh naomi is another new title it's a it's a bendis creation and uh that'll have art by jamal campbell and then Mark Russell is going to be doing the writing on the Wonder Twins book with Stephen Burns, so you know I'm going to be all over that. And then Sam Humphreys is doing Dial H for Hero, so that's going to be a pass, a hard pass for me. Hard pass on that one. Yeah. So what do you think? A little younger skewing imprint for Bendis? I, he did great on – what did he do? He did Miles Morales forever. That was a very young, kind of a younger skewing yeah. book too, so – Worth a shot, I mean, so far. I mean, he's got a good track record. Yeah, I'm kind of excited about that. Uh, we also have uh, a new um, published, a new, um, what is it called? A new superhero universe launched by um, Cassidy and uh, Mark Wade doing this together. So it's uh, the chief creative officer of Humanoids, I guess that's the publisher, is John Cassidy. And Mark Wade's going to be their director of creator development, and they're going to do a bunch of uh, a bunch of books. They've got uh, the guy who did Black, Kwanzaa Asayefo, Yannick P- Paquette, Carla Speed McNeil, and Vanessa Del Rey is going to be on the imprint. So that's the only other name I recognize. Uh, I don't see any titles. Launches summer of 2019 with three titles. And so it'll all be... Um, well, there's one. There's, it's called Ignited. Something Strange is Happening to the Planet. Hmm. Omni, a gifted doctor with a vibrant, compassionate personality. And Strange Lands. Opposites attract. Alaksha and Adam Land aren't married. In fact, a month ago they were perfect strangers. Uh, that's kind of cool. That might be good. There's also a mini series called Big Country, and another one called Meyer, which is kind of looks kind of good. Hmm. Huh. Should be. Uh, should be interesting. I. Another new publisher. Can you imagine that fitting in this marketplace? But <laughs> I mean, it's got big names, so I was say, so maybe. I, who, I wouldn't have thought Aftershock would have been as as uh, resonant to me as it is, but it has been. That's true. That is true. Oh, uh, let's see. Time to dip into the FOC. Um, before we do, um, with the FOC email, um, Eric has started to provide some featured items that he thinks are of interest in the in the in the foc list help us Completely do our job Completely pulling the rug out from under what we do in a given week no I'm just kidding. it's true that's true yeah he's kind of <laughs> taking our thunder isn't he um, well let's see he's featured this week uh justice league dark and wonder woman the witching hour number one a variant edition with a beautiful cover we'll take a closer look at that one uh x-men black emma frost number one Oh, yeah. Uh, that's a nice-looking cover, too. Uh, he also has uh, Shanghai Red, number five, uh, the, a Cover C Virgin variant, uh, which looks pretty sweet, as well as a Star Wars Omnibus hardcover. Uh, it doesn't say what it collects here, but when it says Omnibus, that means it's a lot of pages, <laughs> yeah. lots and lots of pages. 
So let's us take a look in Dark Horse and see what we see. Of course, Stranger Things we've talked about coming out soon. And, yep. Uh, the story of Will in the Upside Down. So if you are planning on jumping on that number one, did not pre-order number two, here is your last chance to make sure that is in your pool box. Now we sampled the first one. I didn't get number two. Did you? Nope. Yeah. And I don't think I'm gonna. I don't think I need this story. Nothing wrong with it. If you are a fan of it, this is where you get it. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's in DC then? A lot of figures. Yeah. Hex Wives, number one. Uh, Deathstroke Yogi Bear. Is this another? Is this another um, wave of cartoon team ups, or is this like the the tail end of the last batch? Mm, tail end of the last batch. Deathstroke Yogi Bear is? Okay. If, are you getting your Hex Wives number one cover A, sir? Because it's who? Joe L. Jones. Damn. I don't know if I knew that. Well, I don't know if you did either. It's a pretty cover. Classic Joe L. Jones. She's not doing anything inside? Not that I know of. No, she's not the internals. But who's doing the writing? That would be Blacker. Ugh. Ugh. Ben Blacker. Ugh. Eh, maybe. <laughs> probably. Uh, yeah, I probably should. Listen to this man waffle back and forth live on recorded air. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a new batch because here's Nightwing McGilla Gorilla. Uh -huh. I think this is the new wave starting. Will you be right reading that one? Yeah, I got that one. <laughs> you do? Yeah. There were some decent creators on here, I think, on, yeah, on no these team-ups. I got nothing else in DC. This... Oh, we're doing the oh, wait, the uh, Justice League Aquaman Drowned Earth number one starts. Yeah, yeah. Drowned Earth Part 1, the Ocean Lords, ancient sea gods with a grudge against Aquaman and Wonder Woman, and invade the Earth with an alien army and flood the globe. As Batman, Superman, and the Flash race to stop the waters from rising and turning everyone into aquatic monsters, Mira seeks the advice of an old enemy, and Arthur must face down Black Manta or lose his connection to the ocean forever. Five bucks, Justice League, Aquaman based. Get it while it's hot. So, uh, yeah, so Justice League, Dark, and Wonder Woman, The Witching Hour was his choice, but it was cover oh, yeah. B, I think. Yeah. And this is of James Tinian. Uh, so, it must be, was it the variant? Yeah, it was. And that's, uh, who's doing that cover? Do we know? Diamond doesn't tell me. Does the does the FOC tell me who's doing the cover? Nope. nope. But it's nice looking. It's nice looking. It must be somebody. Yeah. Or somebody new that he thinks is good. Who does a little F on there kind of looking thing? Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm probably going to kick it myself, but no, I, yeah, I don't know. Let's see. What's this Disney Afternoon Giant in from IDW? Moving down to IDW. Um, Six dollar book. Ooh. Eek. And a bunch of old stuff. Gotcha. Which have been all misses for me, the things I've leafed through. We got a Road of the Dead, Highway to Hell, number one, which is a uh, an over the top wild ride prequel to Road of the Dead, which I didn't <laughs> also didn't read. Done with IDW. Now we go down to Image. Get the of course, FOC stands for Final Order Cutoff. 
This is your last chance to make sure you get these books, so we just want to make sure you don't miss something and then have to chase it and pay those ridiculous secondary market prices that we and Drew and myself put things on eBay for. Exactly. You don't want to be those guys. Yeah, so the Virgin cover is a Josh Hickson cover for the Shanghai Red. Yep. Not a, That is a slow image week. Let's head on down to Marvel. Oh, the, is that Witch's Bad Egg Halloween special? Is that collecting all the stuff from... Uh, oh, I see. Yeah. From the Image Plus book? That was a really good story. Yeah. It is a $8 book. Oh, ouch. There it is. I just clicked it too many times. Collecting the entire Image Plus magazine run, and for the first time, the 13-page pa pulse-pounding conclusion plus extra materials. Crap, I've got to get this. You oh, jerks. Come on, son Scott. Of a Don't be this eater. guy. All right, yes. yes. i got to get it. Yes. i got to get it. i got to know it. how it ends. Eight bucks. Man, eight dollars? Killing me. Well, it's four seventy nine from our good friends the at Bundle. All right, let's head on down to Marvel. Appreciate that. Hmm. What's this Avengers Halloween special? It's a five dollar book. J Jerry Duggan. Doing the writing, a Jeff Shaw cover. That's a nice cover. And the Marvel Comics writing debut of Jay Baruchel. <laughs> How cool is that? Huh. Yeah. I always liked that kid. That's tempting. Let me get that. Might not be a bad one to have. We hear about the Spider Force. Uh, is that the three girls? What is that? A, a Spider Geddon tie in the deadliest missions in all of Spider Geddon has come up, and Kane has stepped forward for what he's sure will be a suicide mission, but he can't do it alone, and Jessica Drew, a.k.a. Spider-Woman, has signed on to help, but has Kane told her the whole truth with Ashley Barton from the Old Man Logan universe, and two new characters, Astro Spider and Spider Kid, Kane's team is complete, and their first mission may be their last. Ah. Huh. Interesting. Spider Kid is essentially Nightwing with spider stuff on him. I think Eric picked the wrong Emma Frost. Look at the uh, LaRocca mugshot variant. Mm -hmm. X Men Black Emma Frost number one. Oh, LaRocca mugshot. Oh, just... Dang. I like yeah. that. That's a good one. And it's not bad. S strong work, LaRocca. Strong work. Think about that one. Do we care Anything about else in Marvel? If magic? No. Yeah, no. She's got a action figure variant. Still not interested. All right, let's head on down. Boom. Here's your bone parish. Nancy Drew, are you still on those, Drew? Issue five, if yeah. you jump it on, yeah, I like don't it. miss it there. Sex Death Revolution, number one, from Black Mask. We getting that? No, 
I'm not sure if Not sure if, if uh, Eric meant to give that a 66% discount or not on that one. Six dollar. Oh, it's yeah. a six dollar book. I bet you we skipped it. <laughs> well, if he <you> did, <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd try it for two bucks. I would try that for two bucks, man. Nothing else. Get me out of here. Nothing else right. at all the rest of the way? Gotcha. <laughs> oh, you double Let check me my work, sir. Let take a look, though. See if you missed something. <laughs> yeah. No, it looks pretty good. All right. Of course, good. that's just right. us going through the FOC, making sure you guys get the chance to make sure that you get the books that you're jumping on to um, with the ability to have them on day one. Yeah, you can follow you along contact, at home if you get on the list. Go ahead. Yeah. If you contact Eric and Cowabunga, no, go he ahead. can put you on the mailing list to get the FOC every Friday mm -hmm. evening with the ability for it to be turned in around noon on Monday to make sure you're getting those in the deliveries as they're supposed to. And it's not something you have to chase it down at the last moment. Um, our local comic book shop yeah. does not do FOC, so it's really cool. Uh, to get to see these kind of things, because more and more retailers are doing FOC exclusive books that you are not able to pre-order, but only get and f actually see well, as the FOC goes. So don't always rely on your LCS uh, to get a variety of books. Uh, check these FOCs and then tell them the ones you want to get. Yeah, someone would probably do it. No, I just don't I think, think I know more about the FOC than our LCS. <laughs> Drew, if that's everything, let's head over to previewsworld.com. Let's find October 10th, 2018. We find that in the new release column. Let's hit that table view and let's start, Drew, where we love to start. Let's start in image. Well, of course, there's another beauty. Um, beauty number 24. This is going strong and I hope it goes forever. But I know sales wise it probably won't. Did, did you like read. Bully I was Wars? I to, but did not. Scotty Young can run. Not bad. Um I su I was surprised. I uh kind of fell off that last thing he you was mean writing. I so, hate Fairyland. Um, I was worried about this one. Yep. Yes, yeah, I fell off of that. Um but it kind of Of course we have Murder like Falcon it. number one. And I will direct your attention to the cover B, which is a wicked takeoff of the Judas Priest album. Um, and I believe they're doing FOC exclusive heavy metal cover Bs for these. So I'll have to keep my eye out for when yeah. the second one comes out. Uh, let's see. We've got uh, another Oblivion song. And was it? Was it Oblivion Song or no? It was what's the other book? Outcast. Was it Outcast? One of the one of the Kirkman books he announced as uh, was ending. Now, now I've now I've misplaced we it. We also in my head. have Infinite Dark number one by Ryan Caddy and Andrea Muti. The universe ended, but on board the Void Station Orpheus, a skeleton crew of humanity survived the last two thousand souls, waiting for a second Big Bang that may never come. Now, two years into their voyage, security director Deva Carell investigates the station's first murder. Yeah, we decided this is just a ripoff of uh, that one movie. Yeah. And here's what I'm excited about. Oh, Walking snap. Dead blind bag variants. And I've heard that uh, in addition to the ones that you ordered, each one of them are going to be, they're going to have like special variants Special within today. themselves so and then in addition there's going to be a one in 200 nice. random inserted uh variant in some of those so i'm not going to get any of those obviously i will just get what i ordered because i never get any of that stuff but i want to i'm still excited Jay about Scott these Campbell. and uh, No, I have multiples coming on some of these, so that means the possibility is still 
available so that it could be one of the rare ones. Should I sell it? Should I sell it <laughs> unopened? Man. And not even know if question. I got it. Ah, I'm going to say open them. Yeah. Well, how do you think Eric and James feel up at Cowabunga? They've yeah. got, they're going to get a case of these things in, and they'll just have to put them in people's boxes unopened. I, I, th- I think that's no fun. Do you I think, think they, they should buy two dozen for themselves and crack them open. Uh, Let's make a little live stream. Out they probably did. Yeah. And uh, yeah, this is all in yeah. because of Walking yeah. Dead Day, right? Yep. And each one you get. So, like, if you open, if you buy a bunch of those uh, issue 19s, the, it's the Campbell variant. You got the Campbell variant in there. You got a black and white Campbell variant in there. You got a virgin black and white Campbell variant, a regular virgin variant, or like the Super One and Two Hundred version. So those are your options. So yeah, like, there's yeah, a yeah. there's all kinds of stuff it could be. Pretty yeah. cool. I think you open these because I think there's going to be specific people. Like, I'm a Campbell guy. I, I just enjoy Campbell. Most people do. That's nothing, you know, crazy. But let's say I bought five of them and I got three out of the four variants. I'm going to be searching for that fourth one and I'm going to go to the secondary market for it. And I'm not going to take any more chances at that point. I'm mm. just going to want it. Gotcha. Yeah. I gotcha. And the Shelby Cam. Oh, man, all these. I want to see what they freaking look like. Yeah, putting Campbell on the mm-hmm. Michonne is was a good yeah. good call. All right, that's all I got in image. Dark Horse, cool. I D W. My Little Pony, Nightmare Nights number one. That's, I don't is that exciting? Know. No. Former yeah. villains turned heroes. Ooh. Nope, nothing else there. Let's head me. on down to D C. Oh, Catwoman four. Joel rocking that cover A. But let's see that cover B, which is where it's really at. Stanley Wow. Art germ. With probably maybe his best work. I love this. Oh, man. So much. That's saying something. Man, that's good. Hey, just get it. I don't care if you're reading Catwoman or not. Get a copy of that book. Just because when people talk about comics and car- comic art, just show them that because it's just a work of art. Man, it's so good. Oh, for crying out loud. good at Photoshop. Yeah. That's got to be digital. And another cover B I friggin' love. Red Hood and the Outlaws 27. Yasmin Putri, who I'm normally not a fan of. Really nice looking cover B. Really like that. Now the uh, the Supergirl foil looks like an art germ. It is. It is. It is. Oh, cool. Yeah. So Only he's back A. on Supergirl. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Kind of missed that one, didn't we? Man. Love these covers. They're beautiful. And I love the cover B on Superman 4. I, I said that during the FOC. I just love the look of that one. Adam Hughes, of course, so... That one will slip by nobody. Oh, yeah. You were a big fan like, of that one. The Daily Planet logos, your mid. You've got a, just that amazing sky. Then just up in the top, just a, a Scotia Superman. So, I mean. It's pretty nice. Yeah, we're going to come back and talk about picks of the week. But get that Superman cover B, that Autumn Hughes. Get that Supergirl A and get that Catwoman B. Yeah, when's the next time you? When's the last time you yeah, could get an no. art germ in foil? Man. That's Man. pretty sweet. 
Anything else, sir? Yep. No, <laughs> We're just kind of plenty. completely skipping over uh, <laughs> um, Jenny Frizen's Wonder Woman, but there's just too much. Too much goodness here. Yeah. Too, oh, that's really a good one, isn't it? All right. Marvel. Man, Infinity War is on third printing. Spider Geddon, go ahead. Well, Spider, yeah, yep, yeah, that's I what I was going to say. say go ahead. Other than Spider Geddon, Christos Gage Dan, with Dan Slot. Fifth printing of Venom, number one. Lord. Man. Let's, yeah, jeez. All right, we've got X-Men Black Mojo. All right, that's all I got in Marvel. Dynamite. Yeah. Um, is that what we were in? Dynamite. Yeah, there's a Project Superpowers number three. Oh, cool. That's a Matina cover for cover A. Hmm. Nope. Nothing Boom. else for me. Nope. No, mm -hmm. unless you're a little Adventure Time fan. Season eleven begins. And in the back half, in our smaller publishers. Nice yeah. to see Animosity come back. It's been a while. We've got Artifact 1 from Aspen, written by J.T. Kroll. Um, Aspen's never really done it for me, but... Yeah. So they're all pretty good books. They just don't really grab me. Anything happen in that Archie's Halloween spectacular? Nope, that looks old. Yeah. That looks old school, doesn't it? Uh, from Zenoscope, we've got Black Knight. That's a grim fairy tale spinoff. Devil Within, number one of four from Black Mask. Stephanie Phillips with Megan Hetrick on art. And Manhouse doing cover A. Paranormal, uh, uh, what is it? Devil Within. What was that? Paranormal and Devil Within, Demonic okay. Possession, or is it madness? When newly engaged Michelle and Samantha move into an old house, Michelle starts experiencing disturbing events. Rogue reflections and mirrors, strange apparitions, and eerie voices only she can hear. Samantha doesn't believe in ghosts, but the alternative might be even more terrifying in this hauntingly paranoid thriller from new writer Stephanie Phillips and artist Man House from Witchblade. Okay, yeah, they've they've they've, they've got hmm, that cool. flipped on here. They've got. We've got Megan Hetrick as the second person, but she's actually the cover artist, Manhouse, doing the internals on it. Gotcha. A four-issue series, Can Black Mask Get Four Issues Out in Under Six Months? No. Oh, what are you talking about? sexy cover B. Yeah. Yeah, that's a little naughty. Uh, let's see, we've got The Last Space Race from Aftershock. Uh, writer... Peter Calloway, art and cover Alex Shibo. It started as an anomaly, an outlier in the noise that's so common in astronomical data. Well, of course. You know how common noise is in <laughs> yes. astronomical data, Kyle. 
but the truth sends the United States and the world careening into what is will become humanity's last space race. Aftershock. Cranking Fielder, out another one. one from Drawn and Quarterly. We hear a lot about Drawn and Quarterly um, in a lot of the old award shows. And we get mad, and we get it's mad because it's eight bucks. There. But we figured we'd talk about it. Uh, some of his short viral webcomic series. So if you're looking for a big book of stories, eight bucks. Fielder number one from Drawn and Quarterly. Amigo is putting out Phantasmagoria number one. Uh, El Torres doing the writing. And Angel Hernandez on art and cover. Um, it's Victorian age horror. Mass murder involving a haunting, a cult of gentlemen, intruders from the outer void, and possessed dolls making this mysterious Professor Hawk making this p- mysterious Professor Hawk come to life and the magician he keeps Dang. in the madhouse of Bedlam. Sounds spooky. Anything else, sir? Uh looking at Titan doing uh Shades of Magic. Oh. It's a uh a young adult fantasy novel series that they're converting to uh, comics might be interesting. They did really well with mm-hmm, the, the crime noir stuff. So, so you never know. Uh, let's see. Hey, a oh, survival yeah. fetish this sighting. One. This from <clears throat> from Black Mask. <laughs> Long delayed. It was... Really fun first three issues, so I'm looking forward to this one, um, if I can remember what happened. Uh, but it, Yeah, a yeah, May solicit, finally. which meant it should have came out in June. Yeah. Or July, sorry. True, this is the part of the podcast where I say, of all the titles this week, what is the one to go to your LCS and make sure you get your hands on, because it is going to go fast, fast, fast. There was a lot of them we talked about, but only one can be Drew's pick of the week. Drew? Uh, I'm doing um, Catwoman 2 for right. you got to get them both. Catwoman 2 for A and B. I do not disagree at all, because, man, that's a good-looking book. Um, I'm going to... Can I just say pick up a blind bag for Walking Dead, or do I have to pick one? <laughs> you might, yeah. Okay. If your store but has them if you're all, only you get probably one, get them all. Get that right? issue nineteen. Get that Campbell version of Michonne's cover, and just enjoy yeah. it. Definitely. Yeah, it's good to be. Nice back. to have good you back, back, Kyle. No more camping till three weeks from now. We got Halloween. Oh, <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. Oh, well, thank you for listening to Comics for Fun and Profit. Thank you for tagging along for Drew and myself. I'd like to reiterate that by going over to iTunes, clicking five stars, saying wonderful, lovely words about us, we will throw you in a drawing for a special comic to be sent to you uh, by the end of the year, I believe, or we'll probably give to the end of the year to do that. So, haven't got a rating and review on iTunes since about April. Um, we love you guys. We love you just for listening. We don't actually need anything from you, but if you'd like to, we would very much appreciate it. Of course, you can get a hold of Drew or myself through uh, Facebooks and Twitters or sending us lines at Gmail. All that stuff can be found at comicsfunprofit.com. So, for Drew and for myself, see ya. <laughs>